Hello, and welcome back to the Simplifiers podcast, where we take topics in business and in life and simplify them. And friends, today's a big day. Big, big, big day. U.S. presidential election. And I, I'm just going to go ahead and say this now. We're actually recording this on Wednesday, September 30th, 2020. And while I, gosh, wish I had a crystal ball to know how this day is going to play out for all of us, not only in the States, but around the world, I don't. But I do have my intuition. And that is... <laughs> That is what I want to talk about today. Let's simplify how to tap into our intuition and help us to actually make better decisions, both in work and in life. So I had to find the absolute perfect expert and guest to bring on, and that is this gal. Her name is Kim Chesney, and she's the author of Radical Intuition, and she's also a cultural innovation leader and the founder of Intuition Lab. Now, she's spent nearly two decades teaching intuition and leading initiatives with some of the top technology companies and thought leaders around the world. I mean, you've probably seen her work featured and supported by South by Southwest Interactive, Carnegie Mellon University, Comcast, Hewlett Packard, and more. She is absolutely on a mission to help people awaken their inner power of insight. So I'd like to welcome to the Simplifiers podcast, Kim Chesney. Hey, Kim. Hey, Mary. Thanks for having me. Oh, goodness. I'm so glad you're here. And I really do wish I knew how <laughs> November 3rd <laughs> is going to play out. <laughs> that crystal ball. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Because either way, it doesn't matter where you stand on, on the election, Democrat, Republican, don't care, otherwise live across the world, it's going to be a big big occurrence. So first, <laughs> take a deep breath from that one. <laughs> first, let's just define what radical intuition means to you. What is it and what is it not? Well, I mean, to me, it's really timely that this whole thing is happening right now on election day, um, because radical intuition I mean, it is radical in the true sense of the word in that it's a whole new way for us to think and perceive and look and live in the world. So when I found out that my book was releasing on Election Day, I thought at first, like, wow, like that's going to be nuts. But it really is apropos because it's time for us to start making a shift. It's time for us to make what I'm calling an inner revolution, right? So we don't know whatever happens, whatever happens today and tomorrow through all this craziness, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter. The real revolution that we have to make is to start to look within and be true to ourselves and listen to that voice within us that's telling each and every one of us the truth between all this lies and confusion. And, you know, we need to find clarity. And now's the time to, to look within to find that. And our intuition now is coming to the forefront to help us do that. Yeah. And I feel like, especially in the last few years, you know, politics is one example, but there are quite a few different examples where it seems like life is trying to deeply divide us and polarize us into these guys versus these guys, this versus that. And and I think that this is also part of this collective awakening, which I hope we go into deeper later, that we're all starting to realize, well, why? Why do we do that? That's, that's not helping, and it, it, it can waste energy, and it's actually doing more harm than good. Oof. Yes. <laughs> and, and intuition is really the, the counterpoint to all of that, you know? And that's mm. why... You know, I'm so excited about this book right now in this moment in time because it has intuition has this unifying message because with all those labels and all the way we divide each other and, mm -hmm. and turn against each other, intuition looks past all of that, right? Because yeah. it's our that higher part of ourselves that we're all connected, we're all one, we all share this sort of same mission to become better and to love more and to treat the world better and each other better. So your intuition is trusting your gut, listening to that, yes. that inside voice, that, that little tiny whisper in your ear that tells you to make that phone call or not yes. sign that contract or whatever. Yes. But what is it not? I want to clarify that. Oh, that is so great. That's my, my favorite thing because I wrote a whole section in the book about what intuition is and is not. 
And, you know, it, the part of the confusion around intuition is there's no like singular definition for it, yeah. right? It's a lot of different things. It's a gut feeling. It's a knowing, right? Yeah. It's, it's a kind of connection that we have. So there's, and I go into that really deeply in the book, but, but what it's not is a lot of these misconceptions that we've had over the years, that intuition is something scary or spooky, or it's a feeling like, as in like some sort of emotion is it's not it's not your critical mind it's not how you feel it's not your heart people say follow your heart no do not follow your heart you're going to get in a lot of trouble if you follow your emotions right you you follow your heart in terms of your passion right and that kind of heart but like, like if you get too emotional or you get too in your head then you know your intuition isn't speaking because it's kind of above both of those things mm. right your intuition is above here and it, it fuels your higher thought and your higher heart is what i say so mm. Um, so really starting to learn the difference between that true inner voice versus all of our fears and our conditioning and, and our critical mind and, and all of those different swirling voices that, that kind of hold us back. It's, it's really the key. So I just want to clarify what you said there because I, I think that I, I'm starting to have the ahas on my side. So, so your head, your thinking is, is like rational thinking, like, oh, I'm trying to figure this thing out. Yes. Heart is like how I feel about whatever's happened to me, the emotions that, that are driven by it, both good and bad, passion right. and fear. But right. then intuition is dropping down deeper, right? Inner knowing, deep wisdom. Is that what yes. you're saying? Yes, absolutely. Like okay. that, it, I, you're, when I talk about, we're, we were going to talk about the four types of intuition yeah. um, and, and that all relates in the different ways that intuition fuels those different parts of us, fuels our mind, fuels our heart, fuels our body, because our body speaks to us too. And that's where, where those gut feelings come in, right? So, so you'll get like a spooky, like the chills of something doesn't feel right. So there's or even like aches and pains, all different ways our body will talk to us. So our intuition talks to us however it can. Yeah. And, and really understanding it as what informs our feelings and our thoughts are uh, really that's the start of understanding your intuition. And it's not that one is better than the other. It's actually trying to get alignment with all three, right? Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It's exactly it's exactly it's about being in alignment and having that resonance where we're thinking with the best part of our minds and we're feeling with the best parts of our hearts. Not that emotions are bad or the thinking mind is bad. Mm -hmm. It's just about using all of these things as, as Einstein was quoted at saying as like servants to our higher intuition, which is our higher truth, mm -hmm. which is a fuels all that and informs all that with, you know, your inner truth and your inner wisdom. Okay. So let's break that down. The, the four types of intuition, how can we harness them and tap mm -hmm. into them to really help us make better daily decisions? Yeah, right. And that's, that's the greatest thing is, is understanding. I, I came up with this model of understanding intuition, um, you know, after working in tech for so many years and realizing that it's, you know, has this multifaceted aspect. And it really inspired me looking at Jung's writing with his four cognitive functions. Mm. So I really, I built it around this idea of body, mind, heart, and spirit, or sensing, feeling, thinking, and as Jung says, intuiting, which is really being and, and connecting with that sort of higher part of life. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we can use these different four types of intuition. All of us use all four types. Some of us are more natural. Uh, you know, they use them more naturally than other. Like if you're an artist, you might be really good at creative intuition because you get all this inspiration and these ideas. And if you're a healer or someone in, the, you know, like working in the, as a holistic practitioner or something, you might be really good at your physical intuition because you're really in your body and, mm. you know, you understand all that stuff. So everybody has their own kind of unique blend of intuition. And I have a little test in my book where you can kind of take it and figure out what type of intuition you naturally have yeah. and then start to work with it and develop it. And there's a bunch of different things you can do for all types of intuition to kind of accelerate it so you can make those better choices and follow your passion and know what you're meant to do and really feel connected and, insp and inspired by life. Mm. So the four intuitions are the healer, which deals with the physical intuition, yep. the sage, which is dealing with more mindful intuition, yep. the visionary, which is more into your creative intuition, and then the mystic, which is more into transcendental. Yep. Tell us more about that one. I'm curious about that one. The mystic. Yeah. yeah. So that's really when it comes to the intuition of the spirit. And that's, you know, a lot of times we think about intuition as, as really the, you know, Paramahansa Yogananda said that intuition is our soul's power of knowing God. Mm. So at the end of the day, like 
it, intuition can help us every day throughout the day, from the smallest decisions to the new ideas or ingenuity, whatever our business goals. It can help with all that stuff in our personal life. But at the end of the day, its most sublime connection is really this this way that it unites us with our source and with each other. And that's where this mystical intuition comes in. This is where you have the spiritual experiences and the awakenings and the knowings and we where we really expand our consciousness. Mm. And so when people talk about um, raising their vibration, their energy, um, mm-hmm. it's in relation to this as well, right? Yes. Yeah. Exactly. So then how does that differ from the sage intuition being mindful Oh, that's a great question. So the sage, the mindful intuition, and I really, I talk a lot about mindfulness and insightfulness because I really feel like intuition is is part of this shift where we're we're working with our mindful being present and in the moment. Mm. And then when we get into that space and that stillness, that's when our intuition starts to speak, right? So the first key is slowing down, opening that space, becoming mindful of our thoughts and, and our actions. And in that quiet, in those little spaces between our thoughts, our intuition can come to us. And that's when we become insightful. So so complementing this practice of being mindful and then insightful really ties into this idea of mindful intuition because you're working with uh, your inner wisdom and your knowings and really processing, you know, in terms of the sage is, is processing our inner wisdom, mm-hmm. right? And making those choices from that place. Mm-hmm. So our inner wisdom can direct us like, should I do this? Should I do that? Am I being mindful? Am I doing this for my soul's growth? Am I doing this for my business's growth, right? So all that decision making from our inner wisdom is tied into the the sage's role. And yeah, that's see, that's what I glean from your book as well. So, it, you know, I feel like it may seem a little bit small um, to think about, well, I just want to make better decisions. But in fact, everything in my life, everything in my business is based on the thousand teeny tiny decisions I make in any given day. Do I go for a walk this morning with my dog or do I not? Do I eat a healthy breakfast or do I not? Do I wear those clothes or not? Do I call that person or not? All of it comes back into crafting this, this greater life that um, is, you know, either or won or lost by a thousand tiny decisions. And so this is where I get excited about the work that you're doing is that I find that my intuition, when I'm really, truly listening to her, man, I am in flow. Man, I, I do feel yes. more vibrant as a person. And, you know, gosh, you look at when when you're in those moments and seasons of flow, isn't it funny how your business is more successful? Yep. Your relationships are stronger. Like all things, your your skin is clearer. I mean, it yes. does break down into all aspects of your life, right? Yes, it absolutely does. I mean, I always joke, intuition should be our, all of our best friend. You know, mm-hmm. it is there 24-7 with everything we do. Every, like, I love the list that you make because whether you're eating, like intuitive eating, people don't realize how important that yeah. is. We think we're like, oh, let's go follow this diet or that. But no, we need to listen to our body. Mm-hmm. And if you listen, it'll tell you. If you listen, like, what does what appeals to me today? What was what do I what do I want? Your that's your body and your intuition talking to you. And and it's so funny because when I was interviewing people for the book, I talked with uh, Jesse Shell, who's a game designer and a programmer. He wrote the Art of the Game yes. and worked for Disney as an Imagineer for years. And, and we talked about AI and um, intuition and machines and how you know do machines have intuition and. And we had this really interesting conversation that came and he came to this point and he said to me, at the end of the day, we found that human beings make decisions based on how they feel. Mm. You can do all of these things in your head. You can make your pros and cons list. You can figure things out. But at the end of the day, you're going to make that choice by the way you feel. And and that feel, that feeling is intuition. And Mm. if we become conscious of that, we're just not conscious of that feeling. So many times we just brush it aside and we don't realize it. So that's a trick. Yeah. And uh, I dare say with humans, uh, or at least I can just say definitely with myself, uh, I try to avoid pain. <laughs> I try yes. to make decisions that that outcome pleasure or, yes. you know, uh, something positive. Um, and it's always interesting when I see myself either procrastinating on a task or, you know, avoiding making a decision because I'm fearful of the consequence or pain that comes from it. 
how, what do you, what would you say to uh, <laughs> asking for a friend? What would you say to that person? <laughs> well, you can tell your friend <laughs> that um, when you really trust, we start to trust your intuition, right? Yeah. Once you get in that place where you trust your intuition, you're naturally going to be less fearful because yeah. fear is like the kryptonite for intuition. They just can't coexist. When you're in that fear headspace, you're not going to hear what your intuition's really saying, right? You're just going to be like, oh, right? So the trick is just, getting away from that, even if it's just taking a deep breath and just being like still and just trying to tap into that part. And then once you learn to recognize your intuition and that gets easier and easier with time, you know, the more that you start paying attention to it. And I'm sure, you know, cause once you're a little bit intuitive, you start to get, Oh yeah, that's what my intuition feels like. Yeah. And so it's kind of a snowball effect. So mm. the more you start to trust it, right. Then the easier it is to just to get out of that fear space because the thing about intuition is you have to have to have to get out of your comfort zone. Mm. And, you know, and this is where it's really crucial for business owners. Right. And I, you know, I worked with business owners for years. I, I ran a, a creative industries incubator. And one of the most important things that we found is getting out of that comfort zone, working with people who are different with you mm. than you getting ideas that are different than yours. Right. All of that stuff. That's the secret sauce. That's the matchup to, to create and innovate and do all of this stuff. And it's the same for life, whether you're living or whether you're working. If you live in the fear space, you're never going to create anything great. You're mm. never going to get into that extraordinary mode of living. Mm. And that reminds me of a page um, from your book, page 99, where you specifically say, okay, yes, this is your intuition or no, it's definitely not your intuition. <laughs> so let me just read a little bit from your book. So page 99, no, this is not your intuition. It, fear, Emotional reactions, overthinking, guilt, conditioning, worry or anxiety, judgment, your inner critic, doubt, tumultuous feelings, being down or feeling small, and having a creative block or even intellectualism. I think it's so interesting when you break it down like that. None of us want any of those things. I mean, right. I don't think we ever want to, but then how much of our life actually looks like that list, you know, yes. and we go in waves of that. So it, that's where I go, oh gosh, if I did tap into my intuition more then you know, that's potentially tapping into a deeper knowing, which is going to cause, um, as you mm -hmm. say, sudden epiphanies, creativity, foresight, inspiration, mm -hmm. discernment, synchronicity. How many times we ever found ourselves in a space where like, wow, that just magically fell into my lap. How did that yes. happen? It's because of a deeper intuitive thought and a deeper thing that's going on in play, right? Right. Absolutely. I mean, that's the kind of thing that it's, it's just this sort of experience when you just open up to your intuition and things just start to come to you. And that's really the trick is just opening and just making that, that, that intention to receive it. And that's the thing about intuition is you don't have to work so hard for it. Mm -hmm. You know, we've been conditioned like the stuff that you were talking about here with it's just, we, we all overthink we're all, our minds are going a mile a minute. We're doing this or that. It's because that's what we've been conditioned to do. Mm -hmm. We've been raised since small children to abandon those frivolous, intuitive things like art and music and, and imagination and learn our numbers and learn our knowledge systems. And we are, we trained our minds really well. We got really smart and that's great. There's nothing wrong with training our minds. We need to be smart, but we forgot about something, right? And that's what I'm talking about. It's time to bring this back. There's a whole nother part of us that we just left sitting there that has all this potential if we just open up and receive it. And mm. it's so easy to receive it if we just allow ourselves to relax and listen. Mm. Well, without naming names, I've certainly <laughs> had to deal with a couple of people in my lifetime, both professionally and personally, who are just stuck in the headspace, thinking logically and rationally and not letting their emotions come into play or not at all trusting their gut, it seems like. And right. it seems as if they're just living in darkness, you know, and, yeah. it, and, and there is a heaviness that, that comes from it and it, it, it translates out into cynicism, sarcasm, mm -hmm. and, you know, a quick, quick, like jo jokes and things to make you feel belittled or down. And it's like, mm -hmm. man, I just, ugh, yeah. you, you can feel it um, can a mile away. It. Yeah. And you know, because 
You know, uh, one of the things I love about Marie Forleo, she always talks about intuition being expansive. Mm. And I love that she said this because you can always tell when something's not your intuition because it makes you feel smaller. Like you were just saying, it makes you feel icky. It makes you feel disempowered, right? So that, if you're ever wondering and you're in your, like going inside your mind and you're thinking, well, is this, I don't feel right about this. I'm not good enough. I wonder if my intuition's telling me that I shouldn't do this. Well, your intuition's never going to tell you it's not good enough or you're not good enough. You know, your intuition is always going to guide you towards things that are going to help you grow Mm. in the right places. You know, it's all about supporting you and your growth and, and making you into something more, opening up who you really are, right? That's the key. Cause we all have our little, selves that we're like afraid to show the world and afraid to get out of our comfort zone and afraid to take a chance and afraid to fail. And our intuition is there saying this way, this way, right? Mm -hmm. And and we just have to trust it enough to follow it in the right direction. And so I can think about my cynical friends who would Mm -hmm. used to be like, whatever. Um, Do this is the question I think they're going to want to ask at this moment, listening to this episode right now. Do I have to be religious or spiritual <gasps> to be, you know, somebody who listens to my intuition? No, not at all. And that's the thing. It, and I always say, it's, it, no matter what religion you are or no religion, intuition still exists the same way your brain and your mind still exists, right? It depends. You can interpret it in different ways. You know, I like to talk about it in really neutral language uh, because, you know, I've found that if, if you think of it in terms of something like, you know, it's the cloud, this, there's a cloud. Okay, think about this way. Everything in the world that's ever happened, ever will happen, is happening now is data, right? Yeah. It's all data like a computer, right? And it's all out there in the cloud of the universe. Our intuition, we can download pieces of that data. It is our connecting line, right? It, it gives us our ability to do that. Mm-hmm. So if you want to look at it in a really simple, like non-woo way, it's as simple as activating a part of your brain. We have these huge brains and we don't know what like half of it does, right? Yeah. Activating a part of that mind that's able to touch into that data. And when you start thinking about quantum theory, and, and I talk a lot about quantum thinking in the book because it really is important because we're moving into this place where linear thinking is, you know, the Newtonian sort of view of the world. Now we're thinking quantum with, with intuition. We're able to do those little impossible things. Like I knew something that was impossible for me to know. Well, it's not magic. It's not ghosts. It's not your spirit guides. You know, you knew that because there's a part of you that can connect with that information out there. Right. Mm. So it can be very practical. Mm, I love it. And you know, I think that that you're on to something here in a big way. And like we said at the very, very beginning of this conversation, I feel like a lot of us, myself included, are just starting to wake up to it as a collective. Yeah. And, you know, you hear other people talk about oneness and, and how we as humans are really connected. And I truly do believe that myself. You call it the intuition revolution. Yeah. I want to take this deeper. So what do you feel is the next step for all of us to start to actually rebuild and reimagine life as we know it? I mean, everything is about to change, right? Yes. Yes. Um, So I had a post go viral recently on social media, and it was just a little meme. And it said, to be true to yourself is the most revolutionary act. Mm. And I think that struck a chord with a lot of people right now. Because being true to ourselves, you know, for me, that's the first real step is, is knowing ourselves, you know, and you don't have to go through any like training to do this or anything. It's something that you can do in a simple pause where you set an intention to, to stop judging yourself and defining yourself and defining life by what you've been conditioned to think from the world around you for your whole life. And we've all have been. We've all been taught to think a certain way. We've all been taught to view the world a certain way. But inside, in our hearts, in our intuition, you know, we have the truth for us, right? And making that shift, turning to ourselves, making that, setting that intention to be true to ourselves. How many times have we known inside that something was wrong, but gone along with it anyway, because everybody else is doing it or, right? You know what I mean? All those different, there's so many different uh, manifestations of this. So making that first intention to be true to our highest self, our intuitive self, and start living that, right? That is what's going to bring us together. That is what's going to you know, unite us and bring the change. And it's going to happen. And we might have a few bumps in the lo- 
the road here along the way because you know all change all great change comes through this conflict and comes through these these times of tribulation but they're here to show us who we are and if we turn to ourselves and we stay true to ourselves we will discover that and come together i have no doubt mm. and in what i appreciated and took from your book as well is that yeah it may seem like it's a, a solo journey that you are self exploration self discovery and and actualization but truly the next step is collaboration is connecting with the community and 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 building that as well. It's not all just an internal journey, right? No, I'm so glad you said that because, you know, part of that place, once you, once you are true to yourself and you get into that intuitive place and you have to really start to follow and live by your intuition, that's where we, we have, you know, not just to have the ability, but we have the duty to act on our intuition. And part of acting on that intuition is we lift ourselves up and we lift up other people, yeah. right? So it's so important to serve and to come back to the com community and to raise our voices and to come together and support each other and uplift each other because, we're, you know, all ships rise together. If we're going to change this world, we have to, we have to do it and be the examples and, and come together during that process. Yeah. And, and as we were saying earlier, that's what I feel intuitively in my heart and, and knowing is that, we have been such a divided community of people for so long, pitted against each other, um, black versus white, Democrat mm -hmm. versus Republican, and all the things, um, U.S. versus U.K., yep. <laughs> uh, and, and, you know, all the things that are, are there. And, and the truth is, once we realize this deeper knowing, and once we do that, that self-exploration and, and start to come back to center – where real change happens, exciting right. change happens, is when we spend that mental energy of fighting and, and dividing and actually come together for innovation and solutions yes. and collaborations between businesses yes. or, you know, even just in your neighborhood and thinking in, in that kind of way, that's where the ripples are going to start to begin, right? Absolutely. It all starts with, with what's right around us. You know, mm -hmm. that's that step that you can take in your life and how I love that, that you said the ripple effect, because that's how it is. You know, you you touch someone and they take what you did and they touch 10 people and they touch. 10, and before you know it, you know, we have a movement happening. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And, and I think that what stops us, um, not only because of the polarization, is that also we fall ourselves in our little hamster wheels and we keep ourselves busy and we go, go, go. And it's like, it. oh, it's Friday again. Oh, I guess live for the weekend. And then, you know, we go, go, go. And oh, I've got yep. Wednesday night soccer practice or, you know, and you just don't we put the blinders on and we forget yes. about everybody else. And and I think that this is a true moment for all of us to to a stop running the hamster wheel, right? <laughs> you have the control and power of doing that. Stop, uh, yep. step off and reflect and be, you know, do some of this uh, tapping into your intuitive side to see what wisdom lays there for you. Um, it doesn't yeah, have to stay this way. No, no. And I mean, it's, it's so important what you just said, because this is really the idea of of your calling. Yeah. And, and this is part of like creative intuition and visionary intuition and behind your calling, everyone has felt it. Everyone has different callings in their mm -hmm. life. You know, you have this idea of something you've always wanted to do, but you've never done. You've, you've had like your heart has been moved you to try things. Maybe you've never tried it. That's your intuition. That's your intuition telling you to get off that hamster wheel, right? So on the other side of that calling is, is, a, is a really strong force that wants you to grow and wants you to serve in the world. And, you know, when we talk about service, people get a lot of like, oh, it's there, it's lame, it's boring, right? But when you follow your calling, it, it, it leads you to your passion. And your passion is what leads you to serve the world in the best way that you can yeah. because you're passionate about it. And so you can ask yourself, what am I passionate about? What am I called to do, right? These are the ways that you can lift other people up and yourself because that's what your intuition is leading you to. And consequently, when you do the work that lights you up, then yes. your life is lighted up yes. as well. Yeah. It's like, it's, that's, that's so great. It's a win-win exactly. situation, right? Um, exactly. I know for sure when I am in flow like that or doing the work that I feel is truly to my calling, it's miraculous. It feels miraculous, you it know, does. um, money oh, no longer is an issue because clients yeah. are pouring through your doors. Um, you know, certain things just feel easier. So yeah. 
here we are again, wishing I had a crystal ball and could know <laughs> what's going to happen on November 3rd. What are some tips or ideas of, to give future us um, <laughs> who are listening right now on how we can tap into our intuition to either A, uh, better self-care um, and whatever the outcome is going to be today, or B, just help us choose the next right steps towards thriving. What would you right. suggest? Well, my, my first advice is don't freak out because, <laughs> you, you know, if it, things don't turn out the way you want and, and the election and all of this other stuff that's happening now, um, you, you know, our, we're, our first inclination is to kind of go into panic mode and fear mode. Right. And 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 we we want to avoid that. So I would say, you know, take that deep breath and remember that everything's happening for a reason, mm -hmm. even if we don't understand it. You know, that's one of the gifts of intuition as we start to. Um, live insightfully as we know that the events of the outside world, they're not random haphazard punishments or disasters that are going to be, you know, unfixable. Mm -hmm. Everything is part of the process, you know, and maybe we didn't get what we wanted at this step in the process, but maybe it has to happen in a different way. Or maybe yeah. there's something we still have to see and learn. So opening space for the fact that the universe has got this, you know, life is unfolding as it needs to and staying true on that center and in that space of trust and doing your part in your life. That's a great way to take those first steps and mm. survive, mm -hmm. <laughs> survive uh, this chaos. No joke. And I mean, that certainly has been the, the hello wake up call for 2020, um, you know, to, to tap into that 2020 perfect vision of just pausing and reflecting and giving space for those kind of divine nudges, if you will, or your intuition to speak up a little bit about where to head next. So Absolutely. if you are feeling like you are just stuck or you're, you've just been plowing through trying to think, 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 think your way through whatever challenges in front of you, I really would recommend checking out this book by Kim. Uh, it's called Radical Intuition, A Revolutionary Guide to Using Your Inner Power. It has come out today of all yeah. days um, at, <laughs> in all bookstores, both in your local neighborhood or online. You can find it anywhere there. Also, her website is Kim chesney.com. I'll put these links in the show notes at the simplifierspodcast.com so you can check it out there. So Kim, a few questions as we wrap up that I like to ask everybody. And again, thank you so much for your time today. Oh, I, I love been great. speaking about this stuff. I, I feel like I could talk to you for hours on it. Yes, I know. So <laughs> first and foremost, what's one book or blog that you're reading these days that's either inspiring you or poking holes and challenging your belief system? Yeah, one of the things I, I've just been going back to lately is uh, Deepak Chopra's book, uh, Metahuman, which came out, I don't know, almost a year ago. And it's really been challenging me because, you know, being into this intuition space, I'm so interested in, you know, what's next for humanity and how we're evolving. And it's a really interesting perspective on, you know, how we our minds are capable of so much more. It really enforces a lot of the stuff that we're talking about in the book. So, mm. yeah, it's definitely worth checking out. Yeah, well, I'll link that up in the show notes as well if people want to check that book also. So um, tell us, who is one person in your network, some of you know personally, you just feel is up to brilliant things that we could shine a spotlight on them and who knows, maybe we'll have them on the podcast one day. Hmm. So there's so many, there's so many to choose from. Like I, I have been, I, one of the things about this work is I've had the opportunity to work with so many amazing women. I mean, men too, but like women in this space are just, you know, being the creative force. We're just so naturally aligned with intuition and creativity, even though men are very intuitive too. Yes. Um, so I'd have to, I have to give a shout out to my friend, Katie Brower. She is the founder of the yoga professional and she really does. She's really done a, a cool job job of um, being an entrepreneur and running this this really cool profitable business but also being sort of holistically minded and a yoga teacher so mm. so she's someone to check out for sure exciting well we will link her up in the show notes so people if we want to connect with her we'll have her linked up there yeah. also so I believe gratitude and simplicity go hand in hand tell me what's one thing you're grateful for today <sighs> You know, with all the stuff that's going on with the pandemic, 
I have to tell you, gratitude has become such a practice in my life. Yeah. Just, just gratitude for all the things that we took for granted even a year ago, you know, even just having, having air to breathe, having a safe home, having, you know, all of the wonderful things that we have, you know, in our culture that make our life worth living. So, yeah. you know, for me, it's very foundational gratitude these days, because you don't realize how much, you know, we, we take for granted every day. So I'm very grateful for, um, for where we are in this world today. Yeah. So if people want to find you and connect with you online, either social media or your website, where do you like to hang out the most? Uh, mostly on Instagram. That's probably where um, we share most of our ideas. And also you can check out our Facebook page too. So okay, both those places where we're doing a lot of free stuff in our intuition revolution Facebook group. So that's a fun place if you want to practice your intuition and get engaged and start doing some cool stuff. Perfect. So her Instagram uh, handle is Kim.Chesney. That's uh, N E Y at the end. Uh, again, all of these links are in our show notes at the simplifierspodcast.com. So, Kim, I just want to acknowledge you real quick. I, I really loved reading this book. Um, I think that this is well timed, and well, of course, it would mm -hmm. be, right? <laughs> if it is right. tapped into your intuition. That's I think right. <laughs> we all need it, um, no matter Indeed. female, male, non binary etc. Um, yes. We all need just this gentle nudge to get back to center. And I just loved, loved, loved reading this book. So uh, I really want to I'm encourage so you. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> so my final question for you today is this, Kim. Someone somewhere right now is listening to this episode and she is in it deep. She is got a big challenge ahead of her. She's got a, a to-do list that's a mile long. She is feeling like she is near burnout. And she really just needs a divine nudge of some sort. What's one thing you could whisper into her ear right now just to encourage her in this moment? I would say my favorite line is to your own higher self be true. Mm. And at the end of the day... That means even when you're overwhelmed, to take pause and remember that yourself is your best friend, is your true best friend. So make time for that. Take that time out and don't feel bad about it because you deserve it. Yeah. Big love to you, Kim. Big love to you, Mary. Thank you so much. 